and welcome to the Midnight Mouse Mini, our little pocket painting for the week. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is wet this background. Now, I've already applied masking fluid to the stars, to the mouse's whiskers, and to his little highlight in his eye. So, I'm wet in the background. My brush still has a little bit of blue from where I put the blue on the palette, and that's fine. But try to use clean water if you can. Then I'm going to start applying that indigo blue right up to the edge of that circle and letting the water blend it down, pull it down. And I'm just going to keep coming around, painting it inside that circle. Now I want it to come down to the ground, but I want it to be a little bit lighter as it comes towards the ground. So once I get some of this going, I'm going to have to go and get some clear water, just dipping my brush in water. I'm not cleaning my brush, I'm just dipping it in the water to add and pulling it down. Now I want a little bit more color at the top, so I'm going to get back into the indigo and drop that up in the top, clean up these edges a little bit, and just drop a little bit more of the paint in there. I'm going to come behind my little mouse with this dark color. Now once that is fairly dry in the back, I'm taking a really, really watery mixture of that blue and a little bit of pearling green, and I'm just tapping in some trees. I'm starting skinny at the top and getting larger in a cone shape down to the bottom. So you want to do a little cone all the way and make it skinny at the top and then just sort of tap on either side, going down, making a cone shape to the, to the ground line, to the horizon line. And these are going to be my trees that are far away in the background because when they dry, they're going to dry really light. So I'm just going to tap those in, uh, leaving a little bit of space in between so that you can see the night sky through the branches. There we go. Now I'm going to add some more trees and this time I'm adding a little bit of sap green in that mixture with the blue and it's a thicker, it's not as watery. This is more like of a cream, I guess, or maybe full fat milk. I don't know how to describe the consistency, but it's it's not real thick, but it's th it's it's thick enough. Put it that way. It's about about the consistency of milk right before you get to cream. Put it that way. And then I'm just going to take my brush and blend that green down onto the ground so it sort of blurs that edge and softens it up. I'm going to add another little tree here with that same mixture, that same dark green mixture, and just pull that green right down to the, to the ground and let the water blend it out. I'm just going to add a few trees behind the little mouse. He's so cute. I love this little mouse. We'll just add some off in the distance behind him just to sort of balance it out so that I'll have a few little trees behind him. They're optional. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to. I'm just darkening up around his little ears here. There we go. I'm just adding a little bit more of, a, of the trees in the background with the really pale mix, the really watery mix. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just taking a little white gouache and going into the snow here on the ground. And while it's still wet, just letting it all blend together with the green. And it gives it a real soft powdery look almost. Now we're going to work on the little mouse. Right around his eye, I'm just taking a, um, a really watered down mixture of raw sienna. And then for his head and his ears I've got a brown color it's a mixture of of um, burnt orange and just a little bit of the sienna mixed together and I'm just covering up his little head and I'm just dabbing that eye out because I wanted the area around his eye to stay lighter than the rest of his head so I just dab that out a little bit because it's getting to be too much of the same tone the same color So, I'm going to keep painting his little body with that same brown mixture. 
and his little ear that's facing away from us. And the other ear is pink, so we're not going to paint it brown yet. I'm just putting a little lighter color right there. Right on his nose. While it's still wet, I'm coming back in with even more paint in some of the areas that I'd like to be darker. And I'm just adding, I added a little bit of um, burnt umber into that brown mix just to darken it up some. And right around the inside of his ear. And then a little shadow. His ear is making a shadow on his body. So we're just going to put a little shadow down there with that darker color. And my little dove is calling out. He's cheering me on. He's my number one cheerleader. He's always cooing in all my videos. Because when I talk, he thinks he's supposed to talk. So I want it to be a little bit darker at the tip of his nose. So I put a little bit more pigment there. And getting it a little darker around his eye. And I'm just building up some layers. That's all. Now on the inside of his eye, I'm just taking um, some really thick... Payne's gray and just putting it in his eye. Now remember we have a little dot of masking fluid in there and that's going to be the highlight. We're going to remove it once his eye is dry. Once the paint in his eye is dry. So. And we're going to add a little nosy with that same Payne's gray. Now this is Payne's gray that's just really thick. It doesn't have much water in it. Also just going to put a little bit of Payne's gray on that ear or under his chin and in that shadow just to darken it up some and then I'm just going to take some clean water and blend it out across that ear. I had too much water it was going to make a blossom or a bloom or a run back if that's what you want to call it so I dabbed it up and just redid it. There I just dabbed out some so it still have a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm just taking some more of that brown mixed with the burnt umber, that um, sort of pale brown. And I'm just going to start coming around his little eye and just building up some more layers and some more color here right on the tip of his little nose. Now I'm mixing a little bit of opera rose with the brown so that it make the pink part of the inside of his ear. I don't want it to be like way bright pink, like bubblegum pink, so I put a little brown in it to tone it down. And then where I want it a little darker, I'm just going to drop a little bit more of the paint. Probably going to have to come back with, um, with a few layers after that dries. So now I'm just taking the brown, going around his little eye, darkening it up some. He's just looking out into space, looking at those beautiful stars on his crisp winter night. Now I'm adding another shadow with the darker brown on that ear and just blending the shadow edges some, somewhat down here. Now I've decided I'm going to take a little more gouache, white gouache, and add it to the snow just to give some snow drifts and then just sort of dab some up in the tree so it looks like snow is hanging onto those branches. We want this to be a nice winter scene. I probably should have gave this little mouse a little scarf or something, but I didn't think about it while I was drawing it. But maybe next time I'll give him a little scarf so we can keep him warm in this cold winter night. Or maybe you can add a scarf onto your mouse. Totally up to you. I'm just kind of blending that around. I'm just taking some water and blending that white gouache across that snow or across the ground to look like snow. And add a little bit more to the trees, just, just so the trees look like they've got a little snow on them too. Now I'm going to remove that masking fluid, and there's the highlight in his little eye. So cute! I'm still not satisfied with the snow, so I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep fussing with it till I get it all done, till I get all snowed up. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this masking fluid from all the stars or the snow. Whichever you want it to be, stars or snow, I don't care. I think it's more like snow because it comes down into the trees. And then I'm going to darken up some more of these shadows. Just add more layers, 
I'm deepening up the brown. I'm using the same brown color that we've been using. I'm just putting more on there so every layer that I go, that I put on there, it's going to get a little bit darker. And just blend it out across his little head. I want it darker again toward his, the tip of his nose and a little lighter as it comes out to the back of his head. And he is looking so cute. So cute. I'm just doing some little fur marks in there just to give it some texture. And darkening up the shadow under his little ear. We want him to look so cute. And I decide I'm going to darken this up just a little bit more. So I'm just blending a little bit more brown on it while it's still a little bit damp. And down his chest. And now. I forgot to film the first part of what I was doing, but I've just got some of my metallic watercolor. And I am going around the circle. And I'm not a very good steady hand, but I'm going around the circle with that metallic gold just to finish it off to give it sort of a frame. Next time I'm probably going to use something that will make my little circle straighter when I paint it. But there you go, a cute little midnight mouse. I hope you enjoyed. Now, if you like art, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification button so that you'll know when I'm posting videos. And uh, see you next time.